rumble, baby, and then you see the flash. My loins are filled like darkened clouds. Evil has no chance. All shall tremble before the storm that gathers in my pants. Turns out being struck by lightning doesn't give you any powers. They caved my head in with a pipe and beat me for several hours. But as I lay there half conscious, with my nuts exposed to air, I looked up to the blackened sky and said an ancient prayer. Lord, if you're there, please infuse my nuts with the power of a thousand suns. Holy shit, you're real? Let there be thunder!
I'm not like other guys I can tell that you have played it safe your whole life So let's get naughty and break a couple rules tonight Speaking of moving, no one will ever know Then run on private property and hold each other close Beneath the moonlight, I've got a fun idea Lean and kiss the cheek and gently whisper in your ear Let's steal a car tonight Commit a felony with me and drive until the sunrise Let's steal a motherfucking car tonight Be young and alive See, let's commit some crimes Hey, I like you I got your flowers, let's get some coffee Look deep in my eyes and tell me about your family We can hold hands, then you can watch me Shoot cocaine into my eyes and rock a family Let's steal some art tonight Want to feel Picasso's when you're on a sexy date eyes Let's steal some precious fucking art tonight Go a little more traditional, go for a walk, watch a movie. Actually, there's a really nice flower exhibit at the Botanical Gardens. Ninja Brian was just telling me about that last week. He loved it. Wait, you know what? Fuck it! Let's kill some guy tonight. We're holding hands and laughing while we shake them in the starlight. Let's take a motherfucking life tonight. We're young and alive. Are. Are we live? Yes, so we are live. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to a very exciting Friday stream where today is the first time I have streamed in over a week. So much has happened. Hey, Little Pink, how you doing? Hi, Zelix. Hi, Hall Frost. Hi, Sour. And hi, V. How are all y'all doing? I am relatively freshly back from TwitchCon. That's right, I took a vacation. I went to a fucking sunny city and I did a whole bunch of shit. And that's basically what we're doing today, is I'm going to be telling you about my fucking TwitchCon trip. Now, you might be wondering, Eric, so many people have come back and already talked about TwitchCon. Why, why aren't you, why didn't you stream before Friday? What, you a lazy little shit? Tardy grades don't have an understanding of time? No, as you probably hear at this point, I'm congested to fuck. <laughs> Unfortunately, on like my last day in San Diego, I sat on a plane, landed back in Seattle, got off the plane, and got sick as fucking shit or something. Post-con crud. Exactly! The post-con crud. And I don't even know what it... I've been congested to hell the past four fucking days. I was fine the whole time in San Diego. I was fine until I got home. Collectively, what I think this means is I don't think this is like a virus or anything. I don't think I'm like sick, sick. I think my body just entered recovery mode. And this is what... I feel like when I'm on half charge, essentially. So I think, hopefully, after a weekend of good long sleep, and none of y'all stressing me the fuck out, I think I'll be good. I think I'll be perfectly fine after a nice calm weekend where nothing stressful happens. Like today at work. We'll put that on the list. All right. Okay, reading what all y'all have said. I'm alright, enjoying ZZZ since we left uh, Cop Arc. I have some friends who play Zenless. I have not touched Zenless. 
I've heard it's something like a gotcha game. And I Quit feel like it's for the best out. I don't get into the... God damn it. I feel like it's the best I don't get into those, but I've only heard good thing from people who have enjoyed Zenless Zone Zero. So I'm glad to hear they're going into an arc you're enjoying. I will be getting a couple commissions recently. Yeah, no, Sour. I fucking saw the rework on which of your characters was that? Is that an artwork? Yeah, the fucking dryad looking elf girl. I think it looks fucking cute. I think it's cute as hell. What I would say on her, though, and I don't know, like, if you've got much more influence, I'd say you should find more places to make use of that bright red flower. Like, right on the uh, right on the feet, almost like a, a ribbon would be, like, on the shoes or, like, shoelace location, you know? I think adding just a couple more points of that, like, really vibrant color, like, down where it kind of gets muddy brown around her feet, I think would just pop like crazy. But I think she looks adorable and looks fucking great. Lazy ass motherfucker excuses. Fight me, Zelix. I'll fucking kick your ass. Yeah, well, I've challenged you to a fight dozens of times. And you didn't come to San Diego to fight me, Zelix. So who's got excuses now? Oh my god. All caught back up once you stopped moving around, Rip. Why, hey, Tree Stalker? I think it's been a hot minute since I've seen you hanging out here. Is, is this what happens? If I pop into Judy's Discord and talk for a bit, all of her mods show up and conquer my chat for my next stream? I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind for what I'm trying to pump my numbers one day. I'll just show up at all of you in general chat. Call you fuckers. Don't tell you what's going on. Go live and wait for you to come yell at me. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. ZZ went from a cop arc to a biker gang arc. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see here. Since when do we stress you out? Little Pink. Of all the, at least it wasn't Terramod. It could have been Terramod, but Little Pink. Don't you, don't you come at me. Don't you look at me with the ooh-woo eyes pressing fingers together. Oh, Eric, when do we ever stress you out? Fucking assholes. All of you. Each and every one of you. I've downloaded it, but I haven't started it. Mm. Honestly, no, I saw Milk play in um, Helldivers 2, and it has been... I think at least three months, if not longer, since I last played Helldivers. But I'm thinking of getting in and at least doing a couple rounds. No clue if I end up sticking in it longer term. Like, I might burn out on it again pretty quickly, but I might give that a couple of rounds again. See what it's feeling like now. <clears throat> Let's see here. Anytime, anybody. Right now, the limited... Oh my god, everybody's talking about Zedless. I'll fucking throw it out. Alright, beat me at next TwitchCon then, fucking Zelix. You won't. Wait, I almost forgot it's also my birthday tomorrow? God damn it, Sour. How could you forget that? Well, happy early birthday, Sour. Wait, I'll, I'll be streaming tomorrow. Fuck. Fuck, I already planned on a game, but do I have to, like, play Slime Rancher or some shit? I'm gonna go re fucking download that ca sour. You gotta, we gotta talk. We gotta do something for your birthday, okay? You let me know what you're getting up to. I'll see if I can work my stream schedule around it, okay? <clears throat> uh, Lamau, it's effective, but it certainly works against me. Tree, tree, I need you to know, and I'm gonna say this about you, Hall Frost, Kindred, Z, Metal Hattie. Listen. From everything I know about Juniper as her friend, and of all the times I've interacted with a few of the mod teams, IRL, what I'm going to say is, I know for a fact anyone Juniper has brought on as a mod would be baited into talking to me if I unprompted said fucker <laughs> And not just yell fucker back, but that would be the perfect way to just start a normal conversation with. I know all of the personalities involved in this little mixture concoction y'all have going on. And I know for a fact, each and every member 
of Judy's mod team would all look at me if I looked them in the eyes and said, fucker, and go, oh, hey, Eric, how you doing? What are you up to today? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, since when do we stress you out, Stweema? God. You know what? I think this is my problem. This is my problem for actually reading all of your fucking chat messages, y'all. Is that now I can't do redeems like uwu speech or anything like that? Because if you write it out, I just get excited to play the bit. I just go so hard into a bit if it's offered to me that it causes problems. Like, Little Pink, I didn't need to read your message out, and I didn't need to read it with the uwu voice, but I saw it was the uwu voice, and I couldn't not do it. God damn it. Helldivers Community Game Night. Okay. Fuck. All right. Depending on how many of you, because, like, if it's only two of you that would even want to play with me, I don't know if we could do that, but I'll fucking, I'll look at, I'll look at that. I'll think about it. I'll post it in the Discord right now. Hold on one second. Uh, general. Uh, everyone. Yo, what? How, how many of you would be interested in, like, a community game night thing? Eh? Like, if... We played Helldivers 2, maybe? I don't know. Sad. Nailed it. And for anybody who wants to play a fun game, play back my, my fucking... <laughs> play back that part of the VOD and read the message, and you will be able to visually see me typing that. Oh, man. You don't have to play Sly Rancher. I don't think you get to decide that, little thing. I'm not really doing anything tomorrow. Just eating dinner at a restaurant with my family? Fuck yeah! Where are they taking you? They probably won't encroach on normal streaming times. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uzumaki finally airs tomorrow? Cool! Uzumaki! Yeah! Uzumaki! Uzumaki. And, um... Hey, Junji Ito! Fuck yeah, really? That, that... <laughs> Hi, son. How you doing? <laughs> uh, okay, what's got... Hey, wait! Is that a Velky? Hey! How you doing? Is Milk not still streaming? Hold up. What the fuck are you doing here? Go back to fucking Milk's street. Yeah, Milk's still streaming! Why the fuck are you here, a Velky? Get out of here! <laughs> Go hang out with milk, asshole. Uh, we got to the end of the mission. I got separated. Had to dodge three chargers, two titans, multiple orbitals, and made it to extract. Called it mech and milk fucking blew up on extraction. Oh, yeah. I replied with sup slut. Yeah, you see, I told you. That entire mod team, all of y'all would respond to it. Can't wait until I get to see the other Judy mods IRL for WeebCon. Ah, uh, wait, Tree, you're going to WeebCon? Tree, do you know if you're planning on doing TwitchCon next year? Really, TwitchCon's been the only one I've been going Hooking to, and I'd like to meet all in. of you. Oh, God. Uh, congested. It wants to go down my throat. I hate it. I hate it. Ugh. Quick, everyone start talking good. Ooh, ooh. Fuck you, V. Uh, hi, how frost? Okay, okay. I got no computer. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm glad to hear you were able to get like through all of your escape attempts, even if everything blew up at the end of Valky. I believe in you. Would you want to join us if we did a community night playing Hell Divers? You'd probably want to join us. Seeing the Darty Grade thrash about his silly. You're fuck it. Rah. No, my favorite thing, so as as some of you might know, Junie actually made this model for me. And uh and I'm gonna say she made it as a birthday like gift, so I think she popped it out, and there are always fun things I'm discovering about it that I'm convinced weren't intentional. For example, 
I'm going to do nothing but move my chin, okay? This thing is so fucking bouncy and I love them. I get to fucking thrash around. Nah. Nah, listen. I need y'all to know this as just a fact about me. Like, you could just all picture it when I'm starting stream. There is literally, I have, every time I've started up my, uh, my fucking VTube studio and gotten my, my camera and everything set up, as soon as it pops in, there's only one thing I have ever done to make sure everything's tracking. And that's, I look at VTube studio and I just go, And I just, I just move my mouth. I don't say anything. I don't move my head around. I just look at it and just, but without the vocals, I'm just. That's, I don't know why this is literally the only way I've ever done a check, but it's yes, exactly. All the, all of that, all of that. I might try for TwitchCon, depending on how well I could get my budget next year. Of course, Tree. I understand budget shit. Oh, man. So, chat. All of you. All of you motherfuckers. I can't believe I called you chat. All of you are either fuckers I know, because you're always here, or Junie's mod team. Alright. My chat and Junie's mod team. <laughs> I got two topics for us to chat about today. Uh, the first is a work-related thing that happened today. The other is going over all of my trip to TwitchCon. We'll talk about both. What do you fuckers want to hear about first? Any interests? Any curiosity? Work is relatively short, but pretty high stress. Uh, TwitchCon is relatively long, and for many of you who follow other streamers, will probably follow a similar pattern to a lot of them. Oh, <gasps> Kindred! Now the entirety of Junie's mod team is here. <laughs> Obligatory, how was your day? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, technically, my day was good. Uh, should I go to more cons? Little pig. Like I've said, I only go to TwitchCon. Because last year I went to TwitchCon, and I fucking <laughs> loved it. Boom. However, Headshot. I loved going to a convention enough to want to go to a convention once a year. It's a very great vacation and th a thing to go to f about once a year for the amount they cost. If they were cheaper, I might look at doing two a year. If if they were easier, I might think of two a year. For me, one a year is good on conventions. <laughs> that's simply how it is. But I think they are good. If you could find one that's either close to you or overlaps with a bunch of things you want, I'd say being able to do one convention style thing a year is fucking awesome. Oh shit, Eric appears at TwitchCon exclusive? Alright, I might look at TwitchCon next year. Fuck yeah! I'm gonna meet the entirety of Judy's mod team. You see, that's the thing. I just gotta get all of y'all, like, wrapped up with me. And then, and then, like, a horrifying tapeworm. <laughs> I will wreck all my... Fuck, do I commit, do I commit to this horrible analogy or save myself? Fuck it. No, like a horrifying tapeworm. A parasitic creature. I will wriggle my way into Junie's Discord community and extract all of the nutrition I need. If one day I pop off, I will pull all of you to my side. I will come to each of you individually and like some sort of a movie fucking mafia member go. I don't know if the Don truly treats you right. Maybe it's time to look for a new family. Haven't I always been good friends with you? Haven't I always been on your side? 
Maybe it's time the two of us work together. <laughs> That's it. The plan is in place. Uh oh yeah. Travel for a con is like once a year thing for me as well. Hell yeah, Zelix. Do you have a con you've been going to? Oh, thing I did today, I rekeyed a medico lock today for the first time. Surprisingly easy. I have no clue what a medico lock is. I'd go to Fernal Equinox. Fernal Equinox. Fur Wait. Fur. Fur. Bro sounds like a congested king. Well, you you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would ya? You hit a guy with glasses. That that's smart. Sorry. <laughs> listen, listen. Any plan I make is gonna turn into a scheme, and all schemes sound evil. That's just me. You're gonna have to. I I don't know how to not scheme while I'm planning. It's a horrible, debilitating condition that mostly affects cartoon villains, but there you have it. Oh, man. Fuck, I just watched, finished watching Sopranos last week. That type of dialogue I've been hearing a lot. Eric Tapeworth is good back pocket. The Eric Tapeworth monologue. Jesus fucking Christ. Con seems spooky. Too many people. Now that, I will say, someone understand. The very first con I went to, I was actually invited to TwitchCon by Junie. She was going to uh, TwitchCon Las Vegas when it was happening there. She's like, hey, you want to come to TwitchCon? And I was like, yeah, sure. I guess I'd never done that. And I show up. I get my ticket, I go there in the morning, and I text her, I'm like, Hey, Judy, I'm at, I'm at the con. Like, where do I meet you? And she goes, Oh, sorry. I'm hanging out with a bunch of really famous people. I'll be there in a few hours and say hi. And I'm like, wait. I have to entertain myself at my first convention alone. <laughs> oh my god. Oh fuck. In the moment, I had a fucking panic attack. I look around myself and I have to fight down the urge to just start screaming, Who are you people? As I'm surrounded by a bunch of fucking nerds at a convention with nobody I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walk into the convention alone, scared, panicked, and I had no clue how Twitch conventions work. So I start walking around and I go up to all these different doors and they got signs on them that's like, uh, how to build your Twitch community. Hmm. A uh, diversity within Twitch streaming. Uh, your Mario people. That sort of shit, right? And I'm like, this is crazy. This isn't at all what I pictured. And I'm walking around for like an hour, hour and a half before I fucking realize there's an actual convention floor I'm supposed to be on. So I just been walking around the lecture halls for like an hour and a half. And then I go down, I get into actual convention floor, and what do I run into the very first thing? is a giant wall with a goddamn picture of Juniper on it from Kindred, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? That fucking punk ditched me, and she's getting a fucking monument to it. So I drew a giant tardy grade that encompassed Kindred's drawing, <laughs> just to fucking assert dominance. Oh, but then I ended up having fun when I actually was just walking around the convention floor. <laughs> that was actually fun. So that was my first fucking Twitch on an adventure. It's just kind of how that went for me. Judy ditched you at the first con she invited you to? Yeah, it was... It was fucking crazy. Hey, Mr. Lone Star. Well, well, well. 
It has been a while since you've been here, hasn't it? Mr. Lone Star. Is there a way for me to actually bring up someone's chat history? Like, I see some streamers do that in some places. I don't know if that's something I could fucking do. Last year. Last year was my first TwitchCon, and yeah, the story I just told was that. Yeah, no, nah, it's just Judy's mods in my chat right now. You should be able to click on his name. Alright, I click on his name, and I see follow, whisper, gift, sub, invite, block, report, ban, timeout, warn. Wait, I can warn bitches? Where the fuck is Little Pink? Hold up. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Little Pink! Little Pink, I need you to tell me what just happened. Little Pink, I need you to describe to me what just happened on your end of things. Please. Please, Little Pink. Are you still there? Tell me you're still there. It was a five second timeout. Wait, it just gave me though like a th message that I could send you. Wait, did you not get a message associated with it? Wait, 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 little pig, hold up. Wait, did, did you get a custom message though? A pop up in there that told me fuck it. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, God. I need to dig around of these menus more often. Holy crap. <laughs> Wait, but now when I'm clicking on bitches, unable to fetch a count. Damn, I guess power comes with a fucking cost. All right, there we go. Now it's back. Oh, shit. All right, I'm going to tell you guys about what happened to me at work today, and then I'll get into this TwitchCon, like me just telling the full story. One second. So click here. What? Click on messages. Yeah, okay. So we have you showing up today, and then the last time you messaged me, Mr. Lone Star, was November 11th, 2022. Damn. And the last messages you sent me were, how is Juni level 103? What did I come back to? Tex, 100%. Don't change, Mr. Lone Star. <laughs> Never change. Oh, God. Wait, there was a button that I had to acknowledge? Damn. All right, I'm gonna keep in mind how that fucking works then. I still have mushroom dirt stuck underneath my fingernails when I picked that mushroom apart. I tried cleaning it out several times, but it doesn't move. Do you have a fingernail trimmer? One second. Not to trim your fingernails, though. Because if you get the... Ah! Motherfucker. There it is. Because if you get the classic, like... I just held it up. I just... So, I have a fingernail trimmer, right? On my desk. And I picked it up. And I, and I held it up like I have a fucking camera. I've never streamed to a camera. Why would my instincts tell me to hold this up to my beast studio? <laughs> Like, it's gonna appear in my tardy brain's hands or some shit. <laughs> oh, God. God, I just tricked. Uh, milk into saying Valorant. Wait, Valorant? Or Valorant? Valorant or Valorant? I'm in too deep. Yeah, no, I'm fucking doomed, y'all. But no, Sour, uh, if you have a fingernail trimmer, and they have a few different tools on them besides the, the trimmer itself. One of the, the cool ones they got that's like a fucking multi-tool is, is the little thing that's both like a nail file. And it's got a little hook on it. And that little hook is basically designed to dig under your fingernails and get shit out from under them. 
In some cases, literally. Hopefully not literally. God damn. But yeah, that'll that oh. Oh fuck. I need alright, I'll get a tissue. One second. Fuck all of you. I'll be right back. Toilet paper is tissue, right? That's the same thing. Same thing. Uh, my lungs are hurting from laughing too hard at Valorant? Or v Valor Valorant! Right! That's the way Milk likes to say it. <gasps> now, one thing I do have to give to Milk. No, I'm not muting myself. All of y'all are having to deal with this. One thing I have to give to him is that if I thought, if like I had no context about what Valorant or Valorant is, and you said that someone was playing a video game and it was called Valorant, I would think in my head, oh, that's a pretty cool sounding fantasy RPG. What, are you in the kingdom of Valorant? That sounds like, you know... Is that another goddamn Junie mod? Fuck off. <laughs> Alright, can I have every member of the Junie mod in my chat just sound off? Just, like, type out Junie mod for me, just so I could not nah, a mod. Okay, making sure. Boom. Goddamn. Hey, z thank you for the gifted sub, my guy. <laughs> Junie mod, Junie mod, Junie mod. Ah, oh, shit. Those fuckers! Did they up my goddamn ad time again? Hold up. Snoozing this. One second. Nah, I gotta go do some edits. Motherfuckers keep upping my ad time without asking me. God damn it. Settings. No. Uh, here. Yes. Okay. Monetization. Ads. No, I don't need the tutorial. Motherfuckers. Yeah, whenever they show me the tutorial, I know they've done some bullshit. No, don't automatically schedule my assholes. Give me the advanced settings. Give me slightly less advanced settings. God damn it. Where's, where, where do I get into the specific shit? Do I have to turn off? God damn it. Yeah, no, this is set to... It showed me it was going to do like a three minute ad break on me. Instead of a minute and a half. Alright, just click save. Whatever. Alright. Okay, I just saved all of y'all. I just burnt one of my goddamn ad snoozes to save y'all from a goddamn three-minute ad break. Because Twitch has no goddamn chill sometimes. Uh, just a friend of the mods. Hell yeah, Clizzard. Shit, no, I also got to beat you at the con, right? Hell yeah. Uh, okay. Wait, I already... I did. Okay, cool. All right, all right. Oh, damn, the ads are back. Everybody, the ads are coming back. You got two minutes. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, The ads are going to happen. Ads are going to end. When the ads end, I'll tell you guys my today at work story. Then after that, we'll get into the TwitchCon adventures, okay? So, in two minutes, we're going to get an ad. It should only run for a minute and a half. Unless Twitch wants to be dicks about it. Met you three times at the con. Three times at the con? Met you once at the con. Once out drinking. And once at K-Barbecue. Yep. Three times over the weekend. Once at the con. Woo! All right. 
took the ads out back and told them to wait five minutes is what I did, Ultima. Oh, God. I got Turbo, so I'm fine. Damn, Lone Star. Fucking cold-blooded. Nah, I'm one of those fuckers that fucking pays for YouTube Red. Dumbest reason why. Uh, so I got YouTube Red when the very first se season of uh, Cobra Kai came out. Because I thought that looked great. And it was. I'm going to tell y'all. Cobra Kai was worth paying for YouTube Premium for one month at the time. Uh, and then what happened is because I had it, I was able to turn my phone off and still listen to YouTube. And that was really nice. And so I paid for YouTube Red exclusively to be able to turn my phone off and still listen to YouTube. I pay way too much for this dumb fucking service. <laughs> but I also, I don't get ads, I guess, and that's pretty cool. All right, y'all. Ads starting in 30 seconds. I'm gonna let them play. Once they're done, I'll tell you about the fucking games industry and some dumbass shit going on right now for me. Well, around me, technically. And then we'll talk about TwitchCon. Hey! <gasps> See you after the ads. Unless you're a sub, then fucking nothing happened. Who in the chat's a sub? Everybody with a little tardy grade next to them. Hey, do I got any tier two or tier three sub bitches out there? I don't think I ever get tier two. I think I only get <clears throat> tier one and tier three subs out of you fuckers. I never get to see the cowboy hat. No, V's a tier two. There we go. Fucking love that cowboy hat. Me, though, I got the space hat. E. So if you like the little tardigrade on the side, milk rating right now. Oh shit! But I'm in ads right now. Doesn't he know? Isn't he aware? Does he not fear them? The Twitch ads will take milk's raid. Wait, tier two gets a cowboy hat? Yeah, it does. Lone Star. Do you know how long it took me to keep editing those image files until the hats actually looked like they belonged on the tardigrade? Holy shit, do they only just barely look right? I think tier 3 has tardibus. Tier 3 has the space helmet. Unless we're talking about emotes. Hey. You did a great job. Aw, thank you, Clizzard. Well, the, don't you do oh my god fuck thank you for the tier three sub kendra thank you for the tier two fucking now you're making me feel bad now y'all making me feel like one of those fucking streamers that are like what do you guys not have five dollars <laughs> oh god damn is that milk hey milk rain hey buddy i think you have the wrong door Leather Club is two blocks down. Fuck you. Which one of you fuckers made me even do that? <laughs> Hi, Nordkey. Hi, Adoras. Hi, Velky. Hi, Milkblade. I don't think I have a shout out command, Hal Frost, though I appreciate the attempt there. <laughs> Honestly, I love whenever I get fucking pro mods hanging out in my chat. Because all of y'all always instinctually shout out. And it's always the funniest thing to be like, Hey, sorry. Uh... I know you've been talking to Joshua, you fucking narc. Oh, shit. Thank you for reminding me about that. I almost forgot about that. I, I appreciate that so much, Milk. Okay. Okay. Wait. So, ads are done. So first, I'm telling you my today story. Then after that, I'll tell you guys my fucking whole TwitchCon adventure. So, today, work was bananas. B-A-N-A-M. Go fuck yourself. Uh, so, for those who don't know, hi, I'm Eric. Yes, that one. I'm a pudgy little charity grade who works in the games industry. I work as a QA tester or quality assurance tester. That's right. I play video games for a living. Not recently, because I was promoted to senior testing engineer this last year. And what that means is I train testers and I write test cases and I manage uh, requests coming from customers. And my life is 
very little playing video games now and a lot more having to manage people playing video games for their living comes with more pay and fucking depression but there you go and most recently i was shifted on to a contract for a company called shrapnel now the company i work for is called lionbridge they're a contracting agency so they contract me out to other game companies this one being shrapnel so i'm employed by lionbridge i'm contracted by shrapnel important now shrapnel has been having some minor financial things going on lately and because of that they've been doing a lot of different teams reductions about a month ago they ended up letting go all of their in-house qa team except for their qa lead now at the time i was a little flummoxed by this for a couple of reasons one being a few months before that the qa lead at shrapnel had started raising the idea of sniping me from Lionbridge, basically hiring me on as an official QA employee of Shrapnel. But I ended up not getting that position, and so just barely dodged being laid off two months later <laughs> as they kept their contract with Lionbridge. However, Today, Lionbridge managers reached out to the testing team to have a, uh, a Friday meeting. And the Friday meeting from Lionbridge was letting us know that the contract is being reduced in size significantly. On the, our team, our contract has one testing lead, five senior testing engineers, and about 15 or 20 testers, basically. And we were told they were going to trim it down to two testers. Basically, 90% of the team was gonna be out of a job. And boy, howdy, is it awkward to sit in that meeting when they open up with, and Eric, you're one of the two that's keeping your job. So most of what we're going to talk about doesn't apply to you. <laughs> so I'm sitting in this meeting hearing about how some people will be able to get on to other projects, but a majority of people are fucking getting laid off. And I'm just sitting here like, what? Is this suffering from success? Well, I'm literally their most senior tester they have. I've been on this project for a while and I've been doing such a good job as a senior tester that I'm one of the two people on our team that have been getting non-stop compliments from our customer. <laughs> so it's me and the tester I trained and recommended for promotion to senior tester. We're the two people staying <laughs> on the project. <laughs> I'm just over here. <laughs> fucking just dodged fucking getting laid off from shrapnel <laughs> and just dodged getting laid off from lion bridge and i'm just like how has this happened twice <laughs> within inches this is coming so today's been a bit of a stressful day I've been getting tugged all over the place emotionally. But I came out of it knowing I've got a job to the land of this contract, at least. Which I know is, at minimum, going past next March, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> Holy shit. 
But no, this whole meeting's happening. Everyone's pretty sure they know layoffs are coming. And part of me in my head is like, oh God, Eric, my boy, you need to get home and start streaming a lot more. You're about to get laid off. You're not going to be able to find a job. You're going to starve. <laughs> I I don't know, maybe I can maybe I can become famous streamer before I start. And then that was the opening line was Yeah, uh Eric and this tester, you two are fine, you're chill. Oh my god. It's so yeah, sorry, I just had to share all that with y'all. Uh, just add that to the pile of signs that something's going wrong in the tech industry ever since the end of COVID. Uh, everywhere is letting go of everyone, and doom will follow. But the doom will miss me by a couple of inches, I guess. Survivor's guilt, any percent? Nah! Like I said, I I know me and this other person were basically their two top performers as testers. Uh, so I'm like, damn. Well, back to work tomorrow, I guess. Ah, uh, thank you, Ultima. I really appreciate that. Short-term profits over everything else. Yeah, COVID threw, I think, just a monkey wrench in everything. Everybody's way of trying to figure out. Listen, I'm also going to say, you fuckers did the same thing to me, though. That happened to all these big companies. I'm, I'm going to tell y'all why all these tech companies are going under and laying everyone off now. That COVID is basically officially done, has been done for about one fiscal year now. So I started streaming pretty early, but into COVID when everybody was home, right? And at that time, so many people were here and everybody was just pissing out money, gifting 20 subs to a fucking cringy ass tardy grade with almost no fucking followers. You mother, each and every one of you individually went to Twitch and YouTube and Netflix to your favorite online media sources, to your video games and your movies and your streaming sites, and y'all couldn't go outside anymore. So you congregated in numbers never seen before and pissed out money into these areas never seen before. And dumbasses like me and professional CEOs of tech companies who shouldn't have the same excuse as me, but there you go, all thought, oh, this is what online content's default is. And it wasn't. That wasn't the default. That wasn't anywhere near normal. So everybody exploded their staves, expecting the money trade to keep going forever. And then you motherfuckers, each and every one of you went outside and remembered happiness wasn't just giving away a thousand dollars to a random streamer and now we're do <laughs> now we're gonna st you ate my only food and now i'm gonna starve <laughs> oh man but basically yeah that's what the fuck happened Oh, man. I've been interning at the same place since I graduated, like, over a year now, but in the last wave of layoffs, they canned my buddy, who was the team's most recent hire. Oh, yeah. Definitely their stimulus checks. I imagine those helped. The What really, I think, also happened, I know at least one of you fuckers did this, is this was also right after the fucking GameStop and Dogecoin shit. So I think just a bunch of normal people walked away from 
financial history with a quick extra $2,000 in their pocket and immediately did the socialist thing and shared the wealth with all of their favorite content makers. Oh, man. Well, when housing prices double at the same period uh, and other inflation happens but no increase in wages, we have less expendable income. Ah, wages haven't been increasing with inflation for decades now. Housing things relatively do, but you know, it's, what, 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 we didn't, we didn't learn a lesson from 2008? Don't be crazy, little thing. Oh boy, I love going to college right at the start of COVID, and then while it's cool, everyone's like, the job market's whack now. Yeah, just gotta wait for the next pandemic, you'll be golden. I do, I am set up now. I do have all the setup ready for the next time. Oh, everyone's forced inside again. So, you know, I'll be ready. I'll be ready to, to fucking work with it. Oh, the congestion. No. No. Ah, all right. Happiness is not outside. Vitamin D is outside, and that tends to be a lot of the happiness. <laughs> happiness isn't donating thousands to streamers it's spending thousands to visit them at cons mm, true 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 i forgot how to touch grass <laughs> you forgot how to spell grass Velky. all right so that's my work news now on to twitchcon can i bring up an image can i get a better background for talking about twitchcon one second Hmm. Let's see. Do I got an image, game audio, uh, non-game capture? Perfect. Shit, but the TwitchCon photo I has a picture of me in it. That might get confusing. Uh, and again, I like confusing y'all. Hell yeah. That's just wrong. Alright. Sorry, I gotta edit the fucking transform. Uh, that that looks good. I don't know one one thousand. One second. Yeah, we're just we're just we're just gonna we're just we're just shot. Yeah, we go. All right. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Oh, man. Forget thousands. The most I'll go is to take a gas going to Dallas. Hell yeah, Cleric. You fucking get it. When I go outside, I don't tan. I burn. Oh, fucking same, little pink. Don't worry about that. Ugh. Let's see. Is that the underbelly in the upper left? Yeah, that is. <laughs> Eric, look out behind you. It's you. Ah, don't worry. Right. Milk mat. Wife at Legoland. Oh, shit. Should I go? One second. I might go get that photo just to have it. One second. One second. All right. I'm going to have that in the back. <gasps> there it is. All right. I'll have that just over there for a bit. So, Eric goes to fucking TwitchCon. This time with plans. So, that's right. This last year, I ended up going to TwitchCon. And I did the big adult thing and planned the whole thing myself. I got an Airbnb, I invited friends to come with me, I bought a one-day TwitchCon ticket, because most of my friends weren't interested in the con itself, so I figured, hey, I'm gonna do one day, and I'm not gonna get the, the fucking, uh, the block party ticket, because most of my friends won't be getting it, so I don't expect to know a ton of people at the block party anyway. I land on Thursday, and I pick up one of my friends at the airport, and we drive on out to where my Airbnb is. But the Airbnb I got was pretty cool. It wasn't in the city itself. We got it out towards Ocean Beach. And we ended up getting this amazing fucking spot. where We were basically able to just walk out of our door onto the beach. And it was amazing. We were also very close to the street that had a bunch of bars on it. 
basically an absolute win. On the drive over, though, we had my first little story. Me and my friend were just shooting the shit, making stuff up. We were just having this talk about how airports need to start making it uh, that people really appreciate the fact that they're flying. They need to get rid of all of the roads. Oh, they need to get rid of all of them that actually lead to the airport itself. Everybody needs to walk half a mile out of the airport to really appreciate that they just flew through the sky like fucking angels, right? And we're like, and we just start adding in obstacles as well. And we agreed we needed to make an earthquake happen when you're leaving the airport. So we're talking about how to fake an earthquake. How you get a bunch of like, you know, fucking mnemonics? Is that what they're called? Whatever the fuck. Electronics under the ground that'll like shake the ground a little bit, you know? So that you can, you can fucking... So it feels like there's an earthquake happening under you. And as we're talking about this dumb fucking plan to make fake earthquakes happen as people walk away from the airport, our Uber driver turns around and goes, I was in an earthquake once. Oh, it was pretty bad. Some bridges collapsed. I knew some people who slipped. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Me and my friend did not talk for the rest of the ride. <laughs> we were so fucking blown away. My friend had to do the talking. And they looked at me so angry after we got out of the fucking car. And they're like, you asshole. I'm like, what? I knew I couldn't rely on you to say shit. I'm like, what do you mean? As soon as he said I was in an earthquake, I look over. You have your hand over your mouth, burying your forehead into the window. I know you're trying to fight the urge to not just start laughing your fucking ass off. And I'm like, yeah, because that was the funniest shit ever. We're like, yeah, would it be funny if we faked a little earthquake when people left the airport? I was in an earthquake. Oh, it was really bad. <laughs> what the? Please tell me more. Riveting. <laughs> oh, God, we were so tickled. Then we got to the Airbnb. Now, I knew I'd be there a little bit before I could check in because I got a relatively early flight because I got it for cheap as shit, essentially. <laughs> Couldn't handle the bit. Couldn't handle the bit at all. And uh, and we get there, and I think it's about noon that we get there. I get the text from my landlord that goes, all right, you'll be able to check in at 3 so me and my friend spent three hours just walking around the area. And that is where I got fucking sunburned on the first day, Thursday, before the even first day of the con. So my entire weekend was spent with sunburns on my neck, shoulders, and face because I'm a pale-ass tardigrade. And while I might not be able to die from the fire... Boy, howdy, do I bake like a lobster. <laughs> First day? Damn, you are Alaskan. I was. I, 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 I'm absolutely Alaskan. Luckily, it was... So, you know when you get just, like, that really light sunburn where everybody walks up and goes, Ooh, damn. And you're like, Right! I'm red as shit. But all that really happens is your face is, like, kind of hot sometimes and when you look in the mirror you're like "Ooh, that's gonna peel like hell but it's not like actively painful you know that's where i was unfortunately i do know that means everybody who looks at me for the rest of the time i'm there it's just like "Ooh, damn so we're walking around and uh we get a call not a text, a call from the landlord on our on that first day after we'd been walking around for three hours to tell us that we're good to go over and check in. But that's not the first thing she says to me. So my landlord calls, is like, hey, so uh, you should be able to check in pretty soon. But I wanted to call and tell you about some of the other people renting other rooms in the building. 
So uh, my landlord owned this building that's got like four apartments in it. We had one of the apartments and the other three apartments, I guess she owns as well. Like she owns the whole building. And the other three apartments were also rented. And I'm like, oh? And she's like, yeah. I remember you telling me your friends were down for a convention. And I think room two and room four are also here for that same convention. Oh, really? Yeah. There's four people in this room and three people in this room. And they were saying that they were going to go for this day and for that day. And I'm looking at my phone, looking at my friend sitting across the table from me. And I'm like, oh. Anyway, I just wanted to, one second, ma'am. Yeah? Did you... Did you happen to already call the other renters and tell them all these details about me? And she's like, yeah, why? Should I not have? <laughs> and she sounded like such a sweet old lady. I was just like, well, I mean, I think from a renting side of things, probably not. And she's like, why? Like, I mean, if I had heard you had been here for like a CIA convention, I probably wouldn't have told them then. And I'm like, I guess it's fine. I just now know a lot of personal information about these people. And she's like, yeah, so now y'all can hang out. All right, thank you. And I hang up, and we walk back to the apartment, and we go up to the door, and on the door is this little lockbox, right, that the keys are in, and we open it up, and it needs a combination. I look at my at my friend, uh, Viv, by the way, Vivian, uh, and I look at Viv, and I go, I'm realizing... For all the information she gave me in the call, she didn't give me the combination to her fucking door. And Viv Good looks at me and goes, really? I'm like, yeah, fuck, you want to text her? And I'm thinking, I don't want to text her. But I pull up the texts, right? And I look, and because we'd been there three hours early, she had given me the combination to a like basically a a separate area that we got to lock our luggage up in right so we just dropped our luggage off and we just walked around for three hours we got back and i look at the combination for where we had locked our luggage up right and i realized the room that we had locked our luggage into before we were told we could come move in was room 101 and the combination for the door that had let us in was 1001. And I look at our room, 203. And I look at my friend Viv and I go, Viv, could you do me a favor? She goes, What? Can you try 1003? And she goes, Oh, did the landlord text you back already? I'm like, just try it and please tell me it didn't work. And she goes, all right. She puts in the combo, pulls, and the lock comes off. And she goes, hey, it worked. And I'm like, I know the combination. <laughs> To every apartment in this building. And the exact days, half of them are going to a convention for the day. <laughs> so wait, how'd you figure out the combination? And the only thing I said was... Basic pattern recognition. So in the lockbox with the keys, I'm like, listen, we're taking all of the keys out of the lock 
box, and we are locking the door from the inside before we leave every day, okay? And my friend's like, got it. So we go in, we lock that bitch, and we make sure we are never dependent on the fucking combination. And I'm just shaking my head to myself going, oh god. No, so Little Pink, it wasn't factory default. What it was is our landlord had set the combination for room 101 to 1001 and 102 to 1002 and 203 to 1003 and 204 to 1004. This isn't a QA mindset. This is basic pattern recognition. I saw one door with a combination, saw what number the door was, and just incremented up to my door number. One, two, three, four, five. That's genius. I have the same combination on my luggage. Oh, fuck. If it's a cheap lockbox, the locks boxes are probably key to like to. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, there's probably other ways to bust it. It was just something where the landlord had volunteered to me all the information I needed to rob that place. And boy, howdy, was that terrifying. So. Oh. Alright, so, that evening, Milk Blade joins us the apartment. We get him in, we start divvying people up. Two people in a room, one people on the couch. Figuring out what the plan for tomorrow is. And then... I get a cheeky little message from somebody. I don't remember who messaged me first. Whether it was Nezco... Or... Hall fro or no, so Nesco or Kindred. One second. Hanging out with you again. I don't know. I don't remember which one of y'all messaged me first, but one of y'all messaged me that night and said, Hey, we're going out to ramen at this place called Underbelly. Do you guys got any fucking... Nez and Hellfrost, the same person. I know they are. I was just looking over at the list, and I start with saying Nezco, and then I see the name Hellfrost. I say Hellfrost, when in my head I'm thinking Nezco and Kindred, so god damn it. Uh, so y'all invited us out to ramen, and we were like, yeah, we got no evening plans. So fucking me, Viv, and Milk got to join you guys. We came down to Underbelly. We got to get some ramen. Hellfrost and Kindred made fun of me. For how quickly I ate my ramen. Like assholes. Let's see here. Zero Z was there. I don't think Clizzard was there for that evening. We got to bust out the sake. It started drinking. Uh, we tried to get more sake. But the line was too long. So we changed our mind. And instead decided to just go to a bar. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. <laughs> He was holding the hot-ass bowl with one... Yeah, I had my ramen... So, listen, we had the ramen, right? And we were at a table, and the table was wobbly as shit. So I just picked up the ramen in my hand so it wouldn't be on a wobbly table. Kindred's staring at me as I'm holding this fucking bowl in one hand. And I'm just eating. And, I guess, and I'm looking at and He's looking at me. And I get through my bowl of ramen. I, don't, I guess Kindred was still waiting for his to cool down or some shit. Like a coward. No, I had to explain to him that I've always eaten pretty fast. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. But we ended up going out to a bar after that and just doing some drinking, hanging out with people. That was the first time I got to get a screwball. Screwball was interesting. I'm glad I shot it, but the smell was amazing. Like, I feel weird because now I just want to, like, I want to get a shot of screwball to have at a table just to sniff while I'm drinking. That shit smelled great. Tardigrade heat resistant. Like I said, heat resistant. I still sunburn easily, but eh, you know. One of my coworkers did a job at public storage once. A builder made the locks for every lock in a public storage. Every floor, the same lock. The one where you just kind of stick in and click open. 
but managed to make every log of the office a different key. Damn. I don't know. It was good. It was good soup. Good soup. <laughs> yeah, I guess the sun is technically... It's more of a radiation burn, right? From the sun? So maybe my radiation resistance just isn't as strong as my heat resistance. Store that in the fucking Eric Tardigrade lore. Just put that in my stat block. Has radiation resistant. After all, the sunburn didn't hurt at all. But I still did sunburn. So, you know. Balance those out together. And boy howdy, did I get sloshed that night though. I don't know. So, it has been a while since I've done any serious drinking. Many of you know about the Jingle Juice event. The Christmas that led me to vomit my guts out. And after that night, I think I gave myself a stomach ulcer. I ended up not being able to, uh... Right. Milkblade and I discovered the secret to sunburns, though. You have to immunize, you have to immunize yourself to sunburns. So what you do is you put your hand out in the sun, and you get a little sunburnt on your hand. That gives you a full resistance to sunburning. So that way, you know, you can't get sunburned a second time. Obviously, you can't get sunburned a second time. But no, I was fucking sloshed. So I was just enjoying the walk. We ended up walking somewhere. Uh, just because it had been so long since I've done some drinking. So I got fucking out of it quick. And I was just enjoying walking with y'all. I think in my head, it was like five minutes later. I'm like, where are we going? And someone's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, we've been walking for a couple of minutes. And I realized I didn't know where we were going. Someone's like. We've been walking for 10 blocks. What? And we went, we sat somewhere where fucking Nezco and Milkblade started fucking puffing on some cigars. And I was in that room. And I remember we're in this cigar lounge, right? And we're in there. And in my head, I put some logic together. I'm like, this room's smoky. I don't like it. And I went and sat outside while the, like, the crew was inside smoking. I went and sat outside just because my head was like, room smoky. I don't like it. And I went outside and I'm just sitting at a table right outside the fucking cigar bar. And this fucking gr group of people walks by. One gives me a fist bump. One shakes my hand. The one shaking my hand then stops and goes, you good? And I, I remember that irritated the shit out of me. I didn't say anything to the guy, but I'm like, that felt rude to me. I've decided I don't like that guy. And then at some point, Kindred fucking passed, right? Kindred, you went somewhere. And I think someone told me you were going somewhere. My drunken brain didn't internalize it at all. Because later, someone else told me, yeah, no, Kindred went to go say hi to Flan. And I'm like, what restaurant did Kindred go to? They're like, no, they didn't go to a place. They went to say hi to Flan. And I look at whoever told me that and I go, Flan, wait, the, the VTuber with the bandaged titties? And they're like, yeah, that flan. And I stood up. I'm like, I want to say hi to flan. <laughs> I just immediately start walking in the direction Kindred went in. Luckily, most everybody had finished smoking inside and came out and walked with me at that point. It was actually able to guide me where I was supposed to go. I walk up. I see Kindred talking to someone and so i just walk over and i'm like flan and they look at me and they're like yeah and i go i'm eric and it takes my delayed ass brain 30 seconds before i go yes that one the tardy crap <laughs> And Fly goes, oh shit, wait. <laughs> and then says hi to me. And we fucking, I don't, I don't even remember. We like shook hands or hugged or some shit, right? 
Yeah, no, brain like fully. Well, the thing is, like, no, no, no. You see, the thing is, the lag wasn't me lagging between saying I'm Eric. Yes, that one. No, the lag was me saying I'm Eric, and it taking my brain way too long to realize why that wouldn't be helpful for anyone. Because I'm looking at someone whose name was explained to me as Flan. So my brain goes, what streamers do I know named Flan? Bandage titties. <laughs> I know Flan. So I look at that person and go, I'm Eric. Expecting their brain to go, what streamer might I know about who is Eric? And not going, a strange drunken man has walked up to this person and said, Hi, I'm Eric. <laughs> That's where the lag came in. And so after 10 seconds, my brain catches up and goes, Shit, dumbass, you didn't give them enough info. Yes, that one, the tardy crate. <laughs> and I know I fucked up. You want to know how I know I fucked up? Because in spite of them being excited to see me, us saying hi, hanging out for a bit, I caught their stream after TwitchCon. I caught their I'm back from TwitchCon stream. And in it, they mentioned meeting me. And the way they described it as, yeah, I saw Eric and he was drunk. <laughs> so I now know exactly what their perspective on that meeting was. And boy, howdy, was my representation to them accurate. <laughs> uh, then we hung out there for a bit. I got some grass-fed fucking burger patties, which were delicious. Don't remember the name of that place at all. Kindred Nezco, if either of you remember the name of that place, let me know next time in San Diego. That was my favorite burger of the fucking weekend. Oh, God. So that was Thursday. That was day fucking one. I got home, went to bed, fucking woke up. Was it Gas Lamp Burger? Might have been Gas Lamp Burger. That didn't make enough sense to me. It was the sign grass fed burger? Shit. I think it was gas lamp burger. Because I remember they had a bunch of signs that said grass fed. And then I read their sign. And I think I asked Milk, What's a grass lamp? Because <laughs> I read it. And I thought it said grass lamp burger. I think that's what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, the sign has grass fed on it. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, I gotta get the I gotta get another burger from there. So, Friday morning, I wake up. I'm chilling it with Milkblade and Viv in our fucking apartment, and Milkblade and me are making our plan to go to TwitchCon, and Viv goes, "Hey, how hard would it be for me to like actually join y'all for the day?" I turn around, and go, "Well." I don't know, because, like, for Las Vegas, day one got sold out relatively quick. If they're not sold out, it should be pretty easy to buy the ticket, I mean. Like, all right, I'll try. So Vib bought a ticket the morning of the convention. <laughs> and we left and we headed out to TwitchCon. We got in. I got my badge. I got to go ooh-woo, as Twitch was forced to acknowledge they pay me every month, which is fun. We got in, we started walking around, just kind of looking at all the stuff through the entry hall. And then Milk notices the Magic the Gathering section. Goes over there, starts looking at all the different collectible cards and shit. I walk away for a bit because I hadn't eaten breakfast. So I went and bought some, uh, enjoyed the stories, take care. Hey, Ultima. Have a good evening, my guy. Glad to see you fucking hanging out for a day. I appreciate it. 
I picked up some chicky strips, come back, sit down at a table, Milk's showing me some stuff he bought, Viv's having a coffee, I think. And all of a sudden, this crowd of hooligans rolls up on us. This, this crowd of fucking heathens, degenerates, the worst sort of creatures you can encounter at a convention. That's right, Juniper Mods. Fucking Kindred, Nezco, Zero Z, and... Clizzard? No. Yes? No. Fuck! Yeah! Clizzard! Fuck it! Yes! I'm right! Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you four fucking rolled up on us and said fucking hi. It was like, hell yeah. Now we got a crew together. Yeah, and you had the little jump feed button. But Clizzard, I need you to know that you gave Viv a fucking heart attack when you rolled up. Because the whole crew rolls up, we're saying hi. Now, I'm pretty well acquainted with most of the Juni mods and the Juni fans, right? I've seen y'all at TwitchCon before. I've hung out with some of y'all. I chat with some of y'all. Milk has a little less experience with some of y'all, but still has some experience with y'all. Viv is just an IRL friend of ours. Doesn't stream. Isn't big into the VTuber environment. And Clizzard sits down to say hi to us. And Clizzard, do you remember the first thing you said to us as a group? I was gonna guess it was Kickstream or something. No, no, no. Because right. Clizzard, you asked me if I had brought a. You asked me if I had brought a uh, Magic the Gathering deck. But then you sat down to say hi to us as a group. Do you remember what you said? So Glizzard looks at us, and having not met the entire group before, just fully deadpan and sincerely looks at us and goes, So, you guys jumped me? <laughs> and I'm happy to fight every instinct in my body. To not start immediately laughing my fucking ass off in the middle of the convention floor as every muscle in my body is just wanting to look at Viv and Milk in that moment. <laughs> because I know neither of them have had to hear that term before. Neither of them know what it is. Neither of them have any of the context to for who these people <laughs> And I'm just like, oh my god, this is the funniest thing that's ever happened to me. And I finally slowly turn to Viv, who's just looking at me like, what? <laughs> and I have to break it to Clizzard. I'm like, so, these are IRF. <laughs> And I'm just busting down laughing because because like I there was a split second where I'm like, hey, IRLs are known as oomphies. But before I could say anything, my brain <laughs> realized that Viv had no clue at all what was happening and had just gotten her first experience. With the mod team was, are you a jumpy? Uh, oh, God. Oh, it was beautiful. It was so fucking great. Oh, God. Having to explain the term oopfy is rough enough. I know. It's, oh, it's so amazing. I was so happy. Oh, fuck. Oh, 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 okay. So that happened. I'm not going to make such a good impression. Hey, listen, I knew the reason I was losing my shit is just because I knew one person in our group 
had no clue what was happening. And that was the funniest fucking shit. So we ended up chilling with you guys for a bit. I broke off for a bit to head upstairs because I wanted to check out Artist Alley was the number one thing I wanted to see. And I was walking around. There was so much, so much fucking great art up there. And I ended up, I ended up picking up something. I got a Senshi, a bit of Senshi artwork from Dungeon Meshi of Senshi looking sexy because I couldn't help it. That was great. End up texting Milk because I'd fully lost him. And he messages me back, and of course, Milk Blade, everybody's favorite speedrunner, the first thing he had gotten himself into is he had run into the game, the games done quick room. As his very first thing, it was just chilling there. And I was just kind of hanging out near Artist Alley. I know Viv got to walk around and ended up getting some things. And then I go and I check outside. I've got this whole 21 and up area. Just shit going on. Eventually I go join Milk. And we're watching them do a Mario speed run. And he's telling me in like an hour or so they're going to do a Lies of P speed run. So we're actually going to end up checking that out. But before that we hear that there's going to be a Junie meetup happening. It's going to be down by Gamer Sucks. So our whole crew picks up our shit. We go downstairs, we're trying all the gamer sups free samples, order to just kind of stay close to the table. A massive line forms. I realize they're all going there to say hi to Cinder, who's who's out there serving. We see someone out there with a mask on. I think it was Cotton Tail. Whatevs. Eventually, we see Judy in the mix, right? We're lining ourselves up. We're moving around the table for when there's going to be the meet. And all three of us IRL friends are fucking ready to, to like fucking zoop up there and ruin her day, right? But we're too slow. Two other fans get in ahead of us. And the, the one right in front of me asks if I could take a picture of him with Junie. And I'm like, yeah, sure, buddy. No problem. So he hands me his phone, turns around and starts chatting with Junie for a minute. I looked at the phone in my hands, look over at my two friends and go, I could just say hi to Junie anytime. They're like, yeah. I looked down at the phone again and look over at them. I could just leave with this phone. <laughs> but I didn't. I waited, took a picture. Then the three of us roll up and we start annoying the shit out of her. Like, oh my god, it's the Juniper act. Yes. Oh my god. Sign my badge. Sign my scrap piece of paper in my pocket. And we're just fucking with her. And she fucking good looks at us and like, you three do realize I 100% can call security on you. And we stop. We consider our situation carefully. And we wish her a great rest of the convention. <laughs> oh, but part of me did think, man, it would be great to get kicked out by security. <laughs> so we end up heading off, going back. We watched the Lies of P speed run. Then we ended up heading out, I think, after that. We head back to our area. And I remember later on, I actually got a message from Junie. That she did have to call security on someone. So, listen. I'm certain it was none of the... It was none of you fuckers. None of you who comes and hangs out in my chat who did this. But if I ever hear... About one of y'all going to an IRL event... And being fucky... To the point of getting security called on you. I need you to know. There will be no safety here. There will be no community for you. There will be no recompense or anything. I will be rid of you. You will disappear like a turd in the wind. 
Most they'd ever do is ask her to sign a physical copy of Slime Rancher. Hey, that wouldn't even be as bad as what Kindred did. Kindred fucking made her sign goddamn Warrior Cats, which is ungoddamn believable. I'm a goody two shoes. You don't have to worry about me. All right, little pink. All right. Oh, man. Wait, no, no way to Glaric. We, we got to keep moving. It's become a tradition at this point. Eric, do you know that it's beyond that? Can, does it ever... Yeah, the kid you told me a little bit about it. They're gonna sign all the Warrior Cat books. Oh, yeah, okay. So eventually, me and my friends, we leave. We head back to our apartment. Then we get a message from goddamn mod team again. They're like, hey, what are you guys doing? We're gonna go get some burgers. Oh, shit, where are y'all getting burgers at? Ah, oh, it's just this, this little place that I was at before. This is fucking Nezco telling us about a place. It's called Hodads. Hodads. Oh. Wait, is that... That doesn't happen to be on Ocean Beach, is it? They're like, yeah, that's where it is. You know about it? My bro. Our apartment's two blocks away from that. So we ended up joining them for Hodads. Unfortunately, my fourth friend showed up in the middle of us at Hodads. So I had to sprint back to our apartment to let him into the place. This is Lotus. So he could drop off his shit. Then we had to run back to Hodads so that we could show up. I show up just because I ran back and forth. I sit down. I start eating my burger. Kindred staring at me like I'm some sort of heathenous monster or something as I'm enjoying my burger. And I stop and look up. I'm like, what was the fucking problem? And Kindred's like, how have you already eaten your burger? Well, I don't know. I was fucking hungry. So we got to hang out with them on Ocean Beach for a bit. We went down to the beach. There was a dude fucking playing the drums and going at it. They had a boombox with them that was playing music that they were singing and playing along to. And holy shit was that guy absolutely going for it. Just a hundred percent. The backup dancer... Yeah, some homeless guy who might have been having a reaction to something sat down next to him and just started fucking going for it. It was a good evening. It was a good fucking evening. And then y'all left. Then uh, me, Lotus, Milkblade, and Viv walked around for a bit. We went into this place that was like a brewery and went up to the third floor. And we were chilling up there just kind of drinking, looking at the whole street. Milk starts showing me these joke Magic the Gathering cards someone has made. And one of them was a joke card for Donald Trump. And I'm reading the effects on it, right? And I get down to the flavor text. And it hit me so hard that I had to put the full oomph behind it. As I read it out loud, as I read the flavor text for their Trump Magic the Gathering card, I'm going, they're eating... The dogs, they're eating the cats, they're, they're eating, they're eating the pets. And I don't realize how loud I've said this on the top floor. <laughs> We're surrounded by other people drinking. And I say this out loud. And the person next to me turns around and she starts laughing and goes, They're eating the dogs! <laughs> And I turn on and go, I know, right? And she's laughing. And the people she's with look over at me. And I realize they think both I and her are going insane. Because the guy and the girl she's with have this look of fear and confusion on their face. As me and her both say to each other, they're eating the dogs. And I have to look up and go, no, no, no. Did y'all see the debate? So once again, I need y'all to understand this full series of events that had happened. I'm reading a joke Magic the Gathering card out loud. I say the phrase, they're eating the dogs. 
the person I don't know next to me turns to me, laughs, and says to me, they're eating the dogs. I look back at them and say, they're eating the dogs. Their friends look at me like a crazy person, to which I say, did y'all see the debate? <laughs> Anyways, I had a nice conversation with them. They had a dog with them. I got to pet him until they ended up leaving. Uh, then me and my friends hopped around to a couple other bars that night. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it was that night. That's right. We went to another bar that also had like an upstairs area. We were drinking there and there was a dozen people up there fucking smoking. And I... I've never smoked in my life. My lungs ain't cut out for it. After sitting up there for like an hour seeped in the cigarette smoke, my face is feeling hot. I'm feeling nauseous and confused. Honestly, I feel more hungover in that moment than I had in almost any other point in my life. We decide to move to a different bar. So we get up, we move to the next bar over, and Lotus is looking at me. And I'm just like, oh, I'm real sorry. I just need a minute. Because I'm just sucking in as much fresh air as I can. And I think Lotus thinks I'm hammered or something at this point. Because he smirks at me and goes, hey, why don't you go find someone and dance with? And I just can't form thoughts in my head because I'm still trying to suck in enough oxygen to be able to think again. And I look at him. And I get up and I walk away. And I walk over to the edge of the banister, right? And I lead over to as much fresh air as I can. And I just gulp down as much fresh air as possible to expel all, all of the cigarette smoke now in me. I walk back towards the bar. I get a couple of glasses of water. And I look and I see they have a dance floor at this bar. A DJ's playing. And there's some people going for it. So I just go over the floor and I just start just fucking dancing. And when I'm dancing while I'm drinking, that's all I'm doing until I go home. So I am fucking going for it, sweating through my shirt and shit, just absolutely nonstop. And I know I'm going to dance until my legs start to hurt and I go home and go to bed, essentially, is the goal. And all of a sudden... I was like, someone looking at me, I realize. I look over, and I see Milkblade phone up, fucking recording me. And I have to fight the urge to not fucking swing at him for it. But he holds up his hand, like, one finger up, like, one minute, one minute. And I see him run away. And I'm like, whatever. Get back into the fucking oinky spaloinky. And then a couple minutes later, Milk comes out and joins me on the dance floor. And we're both just fucking going for it. We were dancing for, like, not without stopping at least an hour, maybe longer than that. And we just fucking went for it. At one point, Lotus and Viv ended up leaving, and we just stayed for, like, half an hour more of dancing or so, and then we go out, I'm fucking so Soaked through my clothes with sweat. My legs. I know I'm going to feel them in the morning. We walk all the way back to the apartment. We get in. And we know the plan for tomorrow is we're going to Legoland. And the reason we know we're going to Legoland is this was the main thing we planned ahead of time for this trip. Because Milkblade, growing up, always wanted to go to Legoland. And never had the opportunity to go to Legoland. So I look at him and I go, Milk, you get the bed tonight. You gotta be well rested for Legoland. And I go and I sleep on the fucking couch, right? And, oh my god. We're out of it. Next morning comes, we get up, we go out, we get on a train. We take a train ride out to where we need to to get to Legoland. We have like a 40 minute walk from the train station out to actual Legoland. And we are just 
memeing our asses off the whole way there, quoting a whole bunch of shit like, mm, give it to me. Mm. We're quoting fucking the greasy straggle. We're just absolutely memeing it up in the way that our friend group does. And then we see the sign for Legoland. We cross through the gate. We step into the parking lot. And as we step into the park, so within seconds of stepping into the parking lot, a van with its windows down drives by and we hear a bunch of children laughing. And you know that like high pitched, like default soundtrack, child laughter sound. And we freeze and we examine ourselves a group of 20 something year olds roll it up to Legoland and we go y'all think do y'all think adults ever go to Legoland <laughs> or like hmm hmm but we've already bought the tickets so we start crossing the, the parking lot. And we're like, wait, because uh, there's a bunch of different buildings at Legoland. So we're trying to figure out where the sign is. And I stop as I see a bunch of different groups going by us. And I turn to my friends. I give a deep sigh. And I'm like, y'all want to know how to find your way to Legoland? And they're like, how? Follow the children. And we just follow this group of kids and they end up guiding us to the main entrance for Lego land. <laughs> and we're all just realizing how weird it is. But we go into Lego land. Milk bought a special ticket so he gets to go over and he makes three little Lego figures at the first store we cross by. We get some maps, we're walking around, and we're like, oh shit, we gotta go to the Bionicle ride. So we go, we find the Bionicle Blaster. So we get on the Bionicle Blaster, it's basically the Tilt-A-Whirl, right? Where you get on, you have the wheel in the middle, and you spin it, and you, we had four adults pack our asses into this Tilt-A-Whirl designed for kids. And we're all getting in there. And Lotus is staring daggers at us as a bunch of children are getting into all the other tilt the world. As me and Milk make eye contact and reach halfway around this wheel to get death grips on it. And Lotus is like, what are you two doing? Viv joins in with us, grabbing onto the wheel as well. And we're like, we're gonna get Bionicle blasted. <laughs> the ride starts and we are all just Full arm strength, sending this fucking machine spinning at the maximum speed we can get. There's G forces on me. I'm ducking down below the lip of the ride so I can keep a stronger grip on the wheel as I'm turning it. And we are just fucking sending it. And we are losing our shit on this ride. It eventually stops, we get off, Milk rolls around, and starts getting a picture with all of the bonkles. Let's see here, one second, one second. Uh, let's see, we're gonna save this to pictures, browse, pictures. I'm gonna see if I could share with y'all the picture Milk got with the bonkle. See here, what does this save as? She. This save to right? This should save as JPEG. Come on, where are my JPEGs at? Uh, pull in a JPEG? God damn it. Alright, one second.
Sorry, I gotta go through a process to make this not a goddamn JPEG for y'all. All right, there we go. Let's your capture. Uh, no. God damn it. This is all falling apart now. Oh, damn. Wait, did fucking... Oh! My OBS! Oh no, the editor froze! I'm moving around on screen, but I can't interact with shit! Alright, I know what happened. Alright, fixed it. I fixed it. Don't worry. No, we're good. We're good. No scuff. Never been to scuff. Never scuffed a day in my life. Alright, where? A, B, C. Damn, that didn't save at all, did it? God damn it. Alright. Now I'm getting you all this picture. It's too gorgeous for you not to see. Alright, we'll save it as Binkle. An Einhorn. Okay, browse. Search. Oh, finally. Okay. Oh, I gotta put it above that. Hey, there's milk. There's milk blade holding the hands of his bionicle wife. Do I know? Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? Just want a picture of your goddamn hot dog. Hey, imagine a VTuber theme park. God, Hollow Live theme park. Oh no. Hey, wife. Yeah. So we got to get pictures of that. We walked around the park. We went into the adventure oh my god we were waiting in line to go on a ride right and it was one of those long ass lines and there's a mom with her three kids in front of us and they're bored out of their fucking minds and the oldest kid pulls out her phone and puts it up to her forehead and they start doing the game where there's like a word and they gotta make you say the word right by giving you you know different fucking hints right but no one in her family is fucking getting it. She holds up the phone and the and her youngest brother, I assume, looks at her and goes, Hedgehog! She goes, no, you don't say the word. You give me a hint for it. She then flips it and goes again. And looks at it and goes, Giraffe! <laughs> <laughs> and she's doing everything in her power to explain. And she gives up, hands the phone to her mom so she can play with her mom. And her mom holds it up to her head, not sure how the whole game works. And the kids try to give her hints, right? And, the, and eventually there's a point where I'm just like turning my back and playing the game. Just trying to have something to do with the line. At one point they're like, uh, yellow, big, in the sky, Sesame Street. Man, I'm like, you know, first I'm like, son. Then I'm like, no, Big Bird. And I'm thinking in my head, Big Bird. And her mom's like, what? She goes, Sesame Street. The the flying yellow in Sesame Street. What do you mean? And I'm in my head, I'm like, Big Bird. It's Big Bird. It's Big Bird. And eventually the mom pulls the phone off her head and looks at it and goes, oh, Big Bird. I'm like, yes. I fucking got it. That family never figured out how to play that game. That poor girl. That poor girl tried real hard to make her family understand how that game works. And it did not happen at any point. But, holy shit. We, we did, like, we had a good time. We had a really good time at Legoland. Oh, shit. We end up going on basically like all of the rides, go to a bunch of the different stores. We went on like a Splash Mountain ride shirtless at one point. That was good. Uh, and eventually we had to leave. We had to leave Legoland eventually. We did one more ride on the Bionicle Blaster and we head on out. 
got our Uber, caught the train. By the point we had gotten back to San Diego, it was well past the VTuber meetup, so I had basically missed the VTuber meetup that was happening. But that evening, we got to uh, hang out with the fucking mods again. Do some goddamn drinking with y'all. I think we dragged y'all out to Ocean Beach again, right? So this would have been Saturday night. We ended up drinking with you... All night, right? Right, we closed down the bar. That's right. Yeah, we hung out with, with them the whole night. We closed the bar. We went out to the beach. We were on the beach until like 3 a.m. Before y'all ended up heading off. And we got up. And me and my friends, we just walked around the streets for another two hours talking. We were up until 5 a.m. And I remember, because at one point we get back to my apartment and me and Lotus are just hanging out on the porch, just kind of drinking water, looking out at the goddamn street at some point. Milk, I don't know if Milk is still here. I'm pretty sure it was this night. Milk had taken some edibles at one point. And they had finally kicked in. I might be confusing Saturday and Sunday night. I don't think I am, though. And so me and Lotus are out on the porch, right? Just shooting the shit. Then we hear from inside the apartment, I know you're talking to a cop. What? I know you're talking to a cop. I can hear him, and he sounds blonde. What? The, the door opens, and Milk comes out and points at me and Lotus and goes, You two were talking to the blonde cop. And me and Lotus look at each other. We look back at Milk, and we're smiling. Like, for any of my Spongebob fans, do y'all know the smile when the two cops are dealing with Patrick and they realize how much license they've just been given to fuck with this guy? We smile and look back at Milk and we go, What cop? He's like, The cop! I heard them! I know! I know they were blonde! We're like, a blonde person? Well, there were some blonde girls we were talking to at the bar. Do you mean the girls? No! What? I know one thing. Definitely no tits. And we go, what? They were a cop. They were blonde. Definitely no tits. And then some people on bikes were going by. And I'm like, you mean those cops? Milk turns and looks at a real panic. His eyes narrow and he looks back at me. He goes, I know you were talking to Joshua. And I'm stunned in this moment as I go, who the fuck is Joshua? The cop! Blonde! Definitely no tits. Joshua! <laughs> and I am fucking dying as Milk is trying to explain to me this fucking blonde titless cop, Joshua. Oh, fuck. So it's like 5 a.m. and we eventually just go to fucking bed. Next morning happens and I'm fucking done. I've had three nights of drinking in a row. Friday night, I had danced for over an hour and a half. Saturday, I went to Legoland. Saturday night, I was up till 5 a.m. I'm not doing anything Sunday. 
so we're just having a sleepy Sunday morning. And then fucking Milk and Lotus got to leave to go back home. And I get invited out to Korean barbecue with Kindred and Nezco and Clizzard and Zirzi and other bitches. Me and Viv go out. We have some good fucking time at Korean barbecue. I get Hal Frost to fucking cook for me. I remember I roll up, I get out of the Uber. And I don't remember if it was Nezco or Kindred who said it to me. One of you looks at me and goes, damn, you put on your Sunday best. And I look down at myself. And in my head, I'm like, I'm wearing the jeans I sweated through two nights ago. The last t-shirt in my luggage. And I threw an unbuttoned button up over top of both of them. And I guess these are my Sunday best. I had fucking Korean barbecue. I got myself through two fucking sojus before I realized just how drunk that had gotten me. Uh, then we get to the end of that evening, had some good fucking steak. We're all getting up. Nez and me go out to a bar afterwards because Kindred and Viv had to go to their own beds. I just drink with Kindred for a bit. I got to talk shop with Kindred. Kindred ends up learning a lot more about my job than he probably should have. No, not Kindred. Nezco. Sorry. I'm reading Hal Frost. I'm like, I've got to correct it to the right name. So I go, the name that isn't Hal Frost. And then I say Kindred. Nezco and me hang out at a bar, just drink and talk and shop and whatever. Ha fucking Nezco learns that the fucking bartender we'd been annoying for two nights in a row knew how to make an Irish trash can and makes one for him. And he's fucking losing his shit. We end up finishing off our drinks, saying goodnight. I head back to the apartment, sleep. Next morning, get up. Get on my plane ride home, land back in Seattle, and find out I'm sick as fuck. And I can't immediately do my TwitchCon post stream that fucking day back. So I've been just trying to recover, doing work from home over this week. Trying to have a nice stress free week so I could stream to y'all today and give y'all the full TwitchCon rundown. The today work lets go everyone. Or tells them everyone's going to be let go by the end of the month or some shit like that. But I still have my job. And now, here we are. Any goddamn questions? Wait, I got one last story. This is an apartment story. So... My roommate had fucking guests that they were bringing over Wednesday, Tuesday, a day. There was one evening that they were going to bring guests over. I didn't give a fuck, right? But then I get a message from them at one point that they were like out at dinner or whatever. And they're like, quick, what's your shower look like? And I'm like, what? Like, how clean is your shower? I go into my bathroom. I take a picture of my shower and set. I'm like, I don't know. Not super clean, but fine. And they're like, so my friends want to spend the night. And my bathroom is fucking trashed. Can they use your shower? And I give a deep sigh. And I'm like. How long do I have? They're like, we'll be there in an hour. So I scrub and sweep and clean my fucking bathroom. So my roommate could let their friends shower in it that night. All the while, I'm just like, what the fuck does your bathroom look like? I imagine them later, I'm like, all right, my shower's clean. He's like, thanks.
That evening, I hear a bunch of people come in and out of my, my bathroom. I'm like, what the fuck ever. The next morning, I get up. I go into my bathroom. I walk in. I had left out two rolls of toilet paper. One that was like maybe halfway used. One that was fresh, right? There's an empty toilet paper roll and a half-used toilet paper roll left. I look in the shower. The floor of the shower is a sea of hair. And my towels were thrown into the little, like the little plastic tub I keep my cleaning materials in. So, like, with the toilet scrubber, my towels are in there now. And I'm just like... <sighs> okay. I fold my towels, throw them in my dirty laundry. I get some water poured into the shower to wash all the hair to the drain so I can clean that later. I'm just like, what the fuck, my dude? <laughs> oh, God. But that's my last, my last story. That's the last story I've got for y'all since the last time I've streamed. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Oh, fuck. Any questions about TwitchCon? <laughs> How are y'all doing? Thanks for letting me yap for fucking two hours? Damn, I've been yapping a while. How the fuck they use that much toilet paper? I don't know. I'm not gonna ask, Tree. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna examine that, okay? My toilet still works. I I'm not gonna i I'm not looking for any more information than what I have. What well, was interesting about that? Is it gave me like cleaning my bathroom and seeing that afterwards gave me a little bit of a like cleaning inspiration. So I went out, actually bought a second uh, trash can for my room because I've had one this whole time, but I decided to set up a second one just so I have like a trash can for recycling and for garbage because right next to each other in my room. Because what I end up doing is all my trash goes in one. And then I just pile up recycling on the floor next to my trash can until eventually I get annoyed by it. Then I fully clean my room. So I'm going to see if just having the two cans will help me be a little more organized with my shit, you know? I do have one question. Do you remember the prank art I was going to show Junie? Was that the strawberry one? Or is that someone else's art? I remember the Uwu Pink Juni artwork. Now I remember the buttons you gave us, Clizzy. Yeah, the ego, right? Didn't that fucking pop off on Twitter? I feel like that popped off on Twitter at one point, right? Turns out we are in danger. Junie said she liked it, didn't she? Junie really liked it, yeah? Hey, do you not remember the Cat Girl episode? Do you not know what you have dipped your toes into, Clizzard? You did this to yourself. And not only that, but as a friend of Junie's, I could say I've noticed some things. When I've hung out with her recently, she is accruing supplies. What I mean to say is, she's picked up a couple new flavors of these big packs of ramen noodles. I saw she had a couple of drink stuff out. And a few other minor purchases and things I've noticed. And recently... I'm going to go double check this. I'm pretty sure Judy tweeted. Let's see here. Yeah, stream will be untenable until Saturday because I'll be off busy doing fun things. All right, yeah, she got friends out. After I'm back, 
We're locking the fuck in for the rest of fall and winter. So yeah, um, y'all, I'm gonna have to check up on her regularly because I don't know if this is a scheduling thing, if she's getting just the itch, or if this is Clizzard's fault. She's supplying. She's preparing. And a juniper does not hibernate. When a juniper d disappears into her den with food and supplies. Oh yeah, she's got fall projects. Yeah. She's going to be working on something big and I'm concerned. God, I just had the whole fucking mod team just go, oh yeah, she has projects. And I'm realizing she's probably told y'all she's working on something. And me as like an IRL friend and feeling all clever like, yeah, I found all these clues, these bits of evidence, these little things I've noticed. I think she's working on something. Yeah, no, she told me yesterday she's working on Well, fuck you guys. Fine, fuck you. <laughs> well, I'm glad y'all get the direct communication, then. Fuck. Uh, alright. Alright. But, that's basically all I wanted to chat with y'all for. Well, no. There's one more thing I want to just talk with y'all about. Really quick. After kind of the work scare I had today, like I said, there was a moment Plus, coming back from TwitchCon always makes me very, like, you know, pensive. Where I'm thinking of putting the next degree of effort into streaming, y'all. So, like, trying to get myself back to guaranteed at minimum three streams a week. Trying to push up my average stream time to, you know, more significantly above two hours like I usually do. And maybe working on doing more content stuff, you know. Maybe doing another ASMR videos for my degenerates out there. Maybe trying to play some games that I can do better, like, short stuff from. But I'm feeling the inspiration. I'm feeling the, the twinges of motivation starting to kick in again. And I'm curious if there's anything any of y'all would like to see me do. I always like to check in with y'all because the number one thing I want to make sure is for you fuckers who have been hanging out with me for years, whatever I get up to, I want to make sure it's something you can have fun with. So, for the next couple of minutes, if any of y'all have any questions about TwitchCon, feel free to ask. And if there's anything you'd be interested in seeing me get my uh, dumb streaming ass up to, let me know. Because definitely in the next couple of weeks or so, I'm going to be looking at trying to, to step it up a little bit. Try to take it just that next degree more serious, you know? I know it, I really have watched... Oh, all I know, I really have watched more of your streams. I appreciate that, Clizzard. The equivalent of Junie's mod team for Eric is Eric's audience. I'm sorry, I got an audience of what? Ten bitches? I got fucking ten of y'all who watch me? That's some people's whole mod team. Y'all are my mod. Hey, Pink, what do you mean? You're a VIP. Yeah, you're like my mod team. Fourteen now, but remember, there's my people and Junie's mods in here. So it's all mod equivalent, you know? Nah, if I ever popped off, you kidding me? I have to go, Pink! Pink, Pink, you, 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 you wanna help? Hey, V, you've literally been at every stream ever. Could, could, could you help me? me, 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 me? <laughs> Burn the witch. Also, I realized I forgot to send you Junie's reaction to Aqua. No, Clizzard, I thought you did. You sent me uh, a bunch of the, the Aqua photos and a few pictures of uh, Junie reactions, right? I'm pretty sure you sent me those. Because it's just a sip. And I'm an op. We are at mods. Ah! Listen, no, 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 you don't understand. 
you fucking hanging out here. I roll you into the mod team because I'm allowed to be wrong about that. I don't get in trouble for calling you two mod team members. Take the upgrade. In my chat, Glaric, in my chat, you are a Juniper mod. Whatever that does for you. I don't know what that does for you. I don't know what being a Juniper mod in my chat does for you. But Glaric and Clizzard, you are Juniper mods while you're in my chat. And no one but me can take that away from you. Unless I add, like, a redeem to, like, make people <laughs> Juniper mods or not. Wait, I could make rare rolls, right? Hold on. I remember at one point, I gave someone the artist role, right? Can I make a Juniper mod roll for my... Ch I gotta look into some stuff after stream, okay? <laughs> I got a head on home. It was fun to my reflect on the insanity that weekend was. Hell yeah, Ken. You know what's amazing? I haven't fucking drunk since then. Maybe I should make something for myself. Oh shit! Wait, Kendra does! I never made you guys the drink I was talking about. Fuck me. God damn it. Alright, I'll make one for myself to make up for it. But, we've got no questions, no requests, nothing else out of any of y'all, then I think that's all I have for this fucking stream. I appreciate y'all coming out and hanging with me. And I hope you enjoyed me just yapping for a bit. Next stream, tomorrow, hopefully, I'll be able to start up on a game I've been putting off for a long-ass fucking time. I'm excited about it. And I hope y'all are excited about it, too. For now, I'll wish you all a good evening, good night, good rest of your fucking weekends. And I hope to see you all again just as soon as possible. But for now, I love you all. And I know exactly who we're going to raid. And I hope y'all will, please, if you're about to leave, please, just hang out for the raid. I just, I just need the numbers for the raid. Please, 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 I'm doing something. All right, here's our raid target. Here is our raid message. I'll see you all again just as soon as possible. So let's. Get ready to raid. All right, y'all. I love you all. So let's get raiding in five, four, three, two. Let's go, girls. <laughs> <laughs>